Hello, welcome back to Prime Number Wednesdays. Today we're looking at Mersenne numbers represented as rectangles. What are Mersenne numbers? Here is a quick recap. These are numbers which are one less than a power of two. Sometimes they're prime, and those are called Mersenne primes. Sometimes they're composite. We'll just call all of the numbers that are of this form Mersenne numbers and we'll write them as a capital M with a lowercase n and then whatever exponent we fill in here we can just put there. That'll be a nice shorthand to be able to see which exponent it is because that's a really helpful defining feature. Our quest is to find out whether or not there are infinitely many Mersenne primes, so numbers of this form which are prime. We do know that if n is composite, then the Mersenne number is composite. And if n is prime, then sometimes the Mersenne number is prime, and sometimes it's not. This one, for example, is 23 times 89. When do we get to the rectangles? Well, what makes a Mersenne number composite? What makes any number composite? Factors! factors. So what we've been doing is we've been looking at all prime factors and which Mersenne numbers they divide. So let me just read from my journal here. Okay, perhaps we can build a sieve by finding out what Mersenne numbers are composite and thus whether there will always be gaps ensuring an infinite set of Mersenne primes. It might not work, but it's worth exploring. Okay, so we're going to look at composite Mersenne numbers and what makes them composite. So last week, we took a look at that Klintberg conjecture, just keeps coming up again and again, that says for any prime P that is not two, P divides the Mersenne number where the exponent is one less than the prime. Okay, what's that written underneath? There. Sometimes P also divides other Mersenne numbers that are smaller, and this seems to play a part. Sometimes there are other numbers here as well. And just here are some quick examples to see how this plays out. 23 divides the Mersenne number where the exponent is 22, it also divides the Mersenne number where the exponent is 11. That infamous 11. Yeah! And then likewise, 89 divides the Mersenne number where the exponent is 88, it also divides M11. This factoring pattern seems like it might be central to figuring out why some Mersenne numbers look like they should be prime, but they're not prime. So how can we look at factors? How can we visually represent factors? Here we come full circle to rectangles. Rectangles! Last week, we took a quick look at some possible ways just to show powers of two. Let's try some rectangles. Here's the example from last week. Let's start with two, and then let's put a mirror right underneath that two and double it, then we get four. And let's put a mirror underneath that, we get eight. And then put a mirror underneath that and double this whole thing and we get 16. We can just keep doing that. And that's a way to show just two to the power of n doesn't include the minus one, but it's a start. Here's the other one we looked at last week. What if we put the mirrors in a spiral pattern? And then this one, we can just subtract it from our initial two, and we'll have this tiny little gap in the middle, but we'll still have a representation of two to the power of n for the rest of them. So this minus that pink dot would be two to the power of n minus one. Is that helpful? Maybe. 
Well, meanwhile, last week we explored binary representation and we found that we can show Mersenne numbers with a string of ones in binary, meaning we can represent a Mersenne number by adding up 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 and so forth, adding up all of those ones in the binary representation. So why don't we just try that? We'll try adding up 1 plus 2 plus etc and see what we get with that. Now the Mersenne numbers that we're going to look at, the composite ones, are going to be the ones with even exponents. Let's only look at Mersenne numbers with even exponents because we know from what we're building that P divides these types of composite Mersenne numbers, where P is obviously going to be odd, and so the exponent we're looking at in the Mersenne number is going to be even. So let's take a look at this one first. Here is the Mersenne number 2 squared minus 1, and it is 1 plus 2. Let's try drawing these in a spiral pattern just to see what happens. This is literally my thinking process. Let's just try it. 1 plus 2. Now let's try the Mersenne number 4, where we have 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. That is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. So there's four terms, just as we've come to expect with the binary representation, a string of four ones when the exponent is four. We get one plus two plus four plus eight. We have an interesting square-like pattern with one missing right here. Does that hold up? Oh my goodness, it does. Here's M6, two to the power of six minus one. We have 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32. Something is happening. When I discovered this, it was 4 in the morning and I started running around my house. I was so excited. I found something significant. And then I couldn't sleep, so I decided let's try and figure out why. What is causing this? Why on earth would it be a square with one missing? Well, then I went back to the mirrors idea. Let's just show 2 to the power of n. Let's start with 2, put a mirror, and double it. We get a square, and when we subtract 1, maybe we'll just subtract the one that's in the corner. And what about 4? Here's 2 to the power of 4. Yeah, what if we put the mirror here, and then here, and then here? It's 2, doubled doubled, doubled. This now explains it. Of course it's a square. And when you subtract one, you can subtract this one in this corner when we put the mirrors alternating horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical. And we're just looking at the even exponents. So that's why when we double twice, we're always going to end up with another square. Oh well, it was a nice thought. Well, hang on, it's maybe not worth giving up on quite yet. Let's look at this a little more closely. Here it is. Just subtracting 1 from the corner, we have 2 to the power of n minus 1 represented visually. Now. It's interesting that 3 divides 2 squared minus 1, which is just this little bit right here. 3 divides this. 5 divides 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. So that's this. 7 divides 2 to the power of 6 minus 1, which is this. But 9 does not divide 2 to the power of 8 minus 1 which is this. Even though we have an alternating pattern giving us a square, 
implying that maybe there is a relationship to odd numbers with just the way that we've drawn it here. No, there isn't a relationship to odd numbers, at least not this relationship. So can we do better? Can we show that there is a factor of three in our rectangle representation? Can we show that there is a factor of five in our rectangle representation? Well, technically this isn't a rectangle because we're subtracting one. It's a square with a missing corner. So, to make a rectangle, what if we just cut off this column and then paste it on the bottom? So we're going to end up with this rectangle where we have a slightly longer side here and a slightly shorter side here. And again, remember, this rectangle is a representation of 2 to the power of n minus 1. This square was 2 to the power of n, but then minus 1, we've built this rectangle. What is this rectangle? Here it is again, but just wait, it gets better.